Hello everyone. Uh, today I am going to show you uh, how I make voxels for Doom and other video games uh, that that use 2D sprites like Blood or Duke Nukem, Heretic, those kinds of games. So the first thing we need to do is download the sprites for the game and uh, once you get those sprites downloaded uh, you can start importing them into Magicka Voxel which is the main application I use it's free I can leave a link uh, in the information on how you can get it we just get a couple frames of the doom guy here so you're gonna wanna start off with uh, a front view and a side view uh, the back and other side will come later um, so the first thing you're going to wanna do is to scale the sprite so that they're both the same size I like using the front frame as the uh, the frame that I'm going to refer everything else to. Since this is the frame that most people are familiar with when they see it, um, everything else should adhere to that. So what I'll do first is open up, so, so right now I'm in uh, what's called, I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> it's a uh, it's called world mode so that means that I can select uh, different objects in the world and um, I'm not at the point where I would edit them uh, you know a particular one so what I have to click here is the little down arrow and that brings me into uh, model mode so as you can see the other model disappeared but we want to see it for reference so I, I hit BO which is display background objects down here and the next thing you're going to want to do is resize the sprite bounding box so that you can kind of resize it so what I do is I just type in 555 and then it resizes all dimensions uh, to their limits, 256, 256, 256. We don't need to work that big, but <clears throat> just to save time and not have to worry about numbers, I just type in 555 or any other large number, a number larger than 256, it'll give you the largest bounding box um, that a voxel can have. So at this point, you're going to want to click on your transform tool right here, and then go down here underneath where it says transform section here uh, click scale now this will show you the uh, scaling options and everything in uh, the voxel is encapsulated in in this little bounding box here so you're going to want to scale it to where it's the same size as the front view I know it looks a little wonky right now, but we're going to fix it. So once you're done scaling it, hit this, which will crop everything down uh, to what's existing. And now you've got them both the same height. Uh, but like I said, there's a, it's a little wonky. Um, one of the first things we want to address here is that when they made Doom, they made the voxels, I'm sorry, not the voxels, the sprites, uh, they drew them in a way so that there was like a, a fake perspective. See how this leg is smaller than this leg to kind of show that it's in the distance. And again here, this leg is smaller than this leg to show it's in the distance. Um, but since we're dealing with absolutes, um, in 3D modeling, we're going to want everything to be the correct proportions when we're messing with them. So you want to go back into model mode, select everything here, 
and we're going to use the scale tool again which is already selected because it's been selected down here in the transform section and we're going to bring that down okay so that looks good for the side view we're going to clean up some of this weird uh, doubling up here of the pixels because we don't want it to look like that uh, and here on the front view we're also going to want to bring this leg down so that it's the same size as the front leg okay so we have that now um, a couple things we want to do to kind of fix this is we're going to kind of change the pixels here so that they don't look like that like they were just stretched out we don't want that so I kind of replace one pixel up here with the previous pixel that was down here and that kind of gets rid of that look I kind of want to make that a little bit smoother looking maybe add another pixel here just kind of clean it up a little bit just so it doesn't look so weird add a pixel there I'm sorry voxel oops that one went away another quick uh, thing that you can do if you're attaching voxels um, and you're working with with uh, you know kind of back and forth adding them or subtracting them you can hold down shift and then subtract them and, and then add them without shift it's really really handy if you're going, going to wa uh, work quickly so I guess this last part is his little pauldron here so we want to uh, fix the pixels here oops okay I'm gonna check uh, right now to see if anybody's able to watch this or if there's any technical difficulties I'm not aware of I'm not too familiar with twitch so I just want to see if it's working for everybody uh, best followers first time chat Best followers, primes, and viewers on mountviewers.com. I don't know what that means. But Zergay619 followed me. This might be a... Uh, I don't know what this is. Anyway. <laughs> Bit of Gold followed me. Hello, Bit of Gold. Uh, yeah, that looks like spam. Best followers, primes, and viewers on mountviewers.com. Uh, how do I report it? Hi, M114. Thank you for following. Okay. Um, I'll worry about reporting that person later. Let's just get back to business. Oh. Here, sorry. I'm eating a piece of string cheese. If anybody's curious why my mouth is full. Alright. So... Oh, and right here too. Alrighty. What are people saying? Hi, Zori. 
Hi, David Elm. Hi, M114. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Captain Lindsay. Okay. Now, I think I've got everything kind of cleaned up here. Well, this looks kind of funky, too. Let's clean this up. Hmm. This little artifact, I don't know. This this is part of the original art, but it looks weird. I don't know why this beige texture is here. So I'll just get rid of it. So I'm pretty sure his pants are just supposed to be green. That looks a bit better. Okay. Let me save this. Green test. So now that we have these... The next thing that you have to do that uh, just took a lot of, uh, I don't even know how to say it, it just took a lot of uh, brainstorming on how to figure this out. Um, in order to make your voxel look 3D, um, you have to create a little skeleton for it. And that's kind of the thing that I figured out that um, was holding me back in, in, the, in the beginning was I could not figure out how can I make this thing 3D and make it look right. Well, you have to put little joints where the joints of the character would be. And then you would attach a line from those joints to create full limbs, full body parts, etc. So we're going to place these little blue points. I should show you guys how I did that. Okay, so to create these little blue points that I'm using, click on the plus. This will create a new model which is empty. Then you would click on the down arrow to go into model mode and up here where it says 40, 40, 40 that's the bounding box size. We want to change this to 1, and it'll change it to 1, 1, 1, X, Y, Z. Now that you've got this tiny little empty uh, space, you're going to want to hit reverse and make sure that your color is blue. It can honestly be any color you want. I just use blue because <clears throat> I like to use bright colors that are not normally uh, used for these sprites. Something that'll stand out on the sprite. So obviously I'm not going to use green for Doom Guy because it would blend in with his uh, uniform. I wouldn't use blue for the Cacodemon because it might be uh, his mouth or his blood. So you're going to want to use a color that stands out on, on whatever model you're working on. Uh, and then we're going to do a little bit of guessing on where the arms are for this side since... Oh no, I'm sorry. This is the correct side, so uh, I'll explain what I mean later. Um, put one for his neck, put one for his head, put one for his pelvis, and then for his hips here and here. And I'm just doing Control C, Control V here, uh, so that you can just quickly spread these points around. One for his ankle and one for his foot. One for his ankle, one for his foot in the back there. <clears throat> okay. So now that we have these here, you know what? I did notice one thing. Let me open up this model. Uh, there's a little blank space right there. I wanted to fill that in. Okay. So now that you have these, you can hold sh shift and then select 
all the ones for one limb and now click on this side view you guys see I don't know if I explain this Do you guys see how I have them lined up edge to edge like this that kind of creates your little uh, reference who do we have here mammalian thank you thank you for coming hey following the doom voxel stuff a bit now I always wondered if there is a way to support your work uh, I'm really bad at this because I, I really would would love to um, to have you guys you know send me money obviously <laughs> that'd be great uh, I had done a patreon in the past and uh, um, I kind of just got too busy with the patreon because I had promised people uh, um, a new model every month for each patron and uh, that got overwhelming very quickly and I don't think I was asking for enough money honestly uh, for that amount of work uh, it took hours to make uh, a single voxel and I was only asking for two dollars a month from people so I really um, I was really selling myself short there I think honestly in, in my opinion but um, it just really got too overwhelming I couldn't I couldn't spend that much time on, on that little money little amount of money um however i do enjoy doing the doom voxel project in my own free time because it's just a, a hobby um i can i don't know i don't think patreon is the way to go for me because uh it, there's just so much involved and and you know i, I work full time i i just got married <laughs> we're trying to find a house and uh i have a lot going on right now um so I don't think Patreon's the answer. I, if there's any other platform you guys think would would better suit uh, the Doom project or uh, me doing voxels uh, in general, uh, let me know. Hey, hey, Badhano, nice to see you. I don't know how you pronounce your name, Badiano, Badhano, Kofi. I've heard of Kofi. Uh, One-time payments that impress you into creating a constant stream of posts. But it does offer people an opportunity to tip you whenever they want to. Less effective as a stable source of income, though. Uh, yeah, I, I agree, but that might be the way to go. Um, at this point, I don't see myself you know, living off of the voxels, even though that would be great if I could just do this full time. Um, but that's definitely uh, a, good, a good recommendation. I could definitely do that just for a little bit of you know, compensation. Um, so anyway... I appreciate that. Thank you, Agent Ash. Um, I'm going to have another uh, piece of uh, string cheese here, and then we'll get back to business. Okay. So, now that I've got these voxels selected down here for the D, for his right leg, I'm sorry, his left leg, we're going to move them over, and we're going to line up each little joint I talked about. in relation to where his legs are. Okay, so this one's for his hip, his knee, his ankle, and his foot. If you guys have done rigging or 3D modeling in the past, you might kind of get the idea. It's just a matter of lining up the joints with where you want the body parts to go. So I'm gonna move this piece to his his ankle or his heel. Um, this piece for his toe. This piece for his knee. And this piece for his hip. chat okay this is his hand um, elbow and his shoulder move this a little bit 
there. For his left shoulder, I don't think I had it lined up correctly. That should be right there. And this is his neck. We want this kind of over here since he's kind of uh, leaning forward a little bit. And here's for his top of his head right there. And it looks like I'm missing one. Yeah, his hand should actually be over here. You guys kind of see how the shape is kind of coming together with these uh, little dots here. This is going to be kind of used as our foundation for the shape of the character. Um, I'm going to create another set of uh, cubes, but these are going to be purple. They're going to be for his gun. I'm just going to use one and two, and they're going to be right here and right here. And we're just going to move these right here where the gun is. So now we have his basic outline in 3D space. And you can kind of see, I just did a little bit of guesswork on, on his right side because I'm just using the left side sprite. And I'm just being lazy here. Um, I normally use the, the right side sprite because um, Doom, well actually this player doesn't have those. Um, so some sprites, sorry I have to correct myself, the player sprite doesn't seem to have those. But some sprites have both the left and right side. Uh, but other sprites only have the left side just to optimize uh, memory usage, I think. So they would just reverse that image for, for the other side, which is, you know, kind of lazy. But I, I get it. Computers back then could probably couldn't handle that many angles. Anyway, now that we've got his... Uh, full shape, we are going to highlight all these cubes we made holding uh, shift and then left mouse button. And then we are going to go to this edit panel here and down here where it says boolean we're going to hit union to unite all of these points together as one model and they're wrapped by you know which points go out the furthest so we're gonna want to double click inside the model to open up model space you can either hit this arrow or double click the model uh, to go into model space and you can see that uh, we have these limits here where the points end so we want to resize the model space. Oops, I accidentally made one right there. Delete that. Resize the model space so that we have enough room to flesh out the character. We don't want it uh, being limited and then you're going to run into problems where you're not going to have enough space to flesh out his arm or his gun or his legs. Click BO to open up the background because we're going to want to work with the background on this. So see how these uh, other models are kind of grayed out a little bit. That's because we're not selected. They're not selected. So the next tricky part we kind of have to do is select the new color. I like to use yellow because we're going to make lines from each of these points. And normally um, down here where you see project, it's highlighted. But we don't want to connect these uh, points with uh, project project on because then it'll just project it to the nearest wall we want a straight line going from one point to the other to do that unselect project and therefore you can start from one point to the other so I should probably mention uh, make sure that you're on geometry mode L for line and not voxel mode because you're going to want to use line for this. Voxel mode will not work for this. Uh, then select another one, bring it, 
and then just drag your lines, oops, like this. Like that. Like that. Like that. Is that the right one? Nope. Like this. Like this. And like this. Okay. So, now we've got our basic shape. Oh, let's do the gun as well. Okay. So you've got your basic skeleton for the character. Um, which is great. Because this is going to make positioning everything a whole lot easier. Um... Now that you've got these shapes, uh, I want to separate the gun model from the rest of the model. So here, click this magic wand icon. It says region select down, down there. So uh, hit the red pixels and also hold shift and hit the purple pixels or pink pixels, whatever. Cut them, control X, get into world view and then paste them, control V. Because you don't want to do it in model, model view because you're just going to paste them right back into the same model. Now they're two separate models. So if I hit the, the fit model size button, you'll see that this bounding box is only uh, encapsulating the weapon and that this player model is now separate. We've pretty much you know, separated the gun from the player model. Now the next thing that we we're going to do is flesh out the model. To do that, I like to do each limb individually because if you do them all together, you're going to have a huge mess to deal with and you're not going to want to do it. Uh, you're just not going to want to deal with that. It's too much cleanup. It's too much brain power. You don't want to deal with it. So what we're going to want to do is select the marquee select button and select one limb. I'm just going to do uh, the leg first. We're going to do the same thing we did with the gun. Control X, Control V. And we're going to go into model view. Okay. So now that we're back in model view, we're going to flesh it out. And the way to do that is to go down on the edit panel and click modify. And go down here to dilate, dilation. Select it once. Well, you've still got some space to fill here. So select it again. Still a little bit more to go. Select it again. Still a bit more to cover. Select it again, still more to cover. There, there we go. So now we've got the entire uh, leg covered by this thing. And look, it's pretty fat and chunky right now. We're gonna chip away at that. In order to do that, uh, go ahead and go on the reverse side of the model where the player sprite is in front of your model see how the model is behind the sprite this is what we want to do we want to start selecting with the marquee tool here the red pixels that are outside of the model and then delete them we're basically just trimming down our model so that it's it's flush with our with our uh, sprite our referenced sprite and you can select BO to see what it looks like and then reselect it to put the model back over it. Well, it looks like there's some behind here too, so we're gonna delete those as well. So bring it back around. 
We're going to delete what's up here too, because we're that's his torso. We're only working on his leg. Again, you're going to want to re rotate the view again to where uh, the model is behind the side sprite, and we're going to do trimming over here too with the marquee tool. So trim it some more. And you're going to want to select what's behind here too. You can't see what, what you're selecting, but it's, it's also... Um, part of that leg that you don't want sticking out so okay basically well he's kind of fat right here we're gonna want to trim this too because that's obviously where the torso and his leg kind of intersect there so we're gonna get rid of that as well now you're left with a very very blocky uh, leg well, obviously we don't want that, so we're going to start chipping away. This is why it takes me so long to make these models, uh, is basically kind of molding. That's the main part that takes a lot of time. You're going to want to select your line tool again, hit project. We're going to want to use project now, and we are going to start chipping away at him, kind of rounding out. The model. If you look at my earlier models, they're pretty chunky because I wasn't doing uh, a thorough job of chipping away at these uh, excess voxels. So they ended up looking a lot fatter than they should have. I'm going to check uh, chat again. With that process, is it hard to keep temporal model consistency? So that the model doesn't have noticeable scale differences or similar jumpiness. Um, I've kind of, I've kind of figured that if you reference the front sprite and had let everyone everything else kind of depend on that aspect of it, um, it usually works out pretty well. Uh, with more complicated stuff, uh, it can definitely. Uh, really start to complicate things and, and make them a lot harder uh, to flesh out. <sighs> I don't know if that answers your question. Um, basically, the, the more complicated a model is, the, the more you really need to line up your, your, your pieces. So if you have an arm uh, that doesn't line up with the side view, you're going to want to do the editing that I showed you guys to make sure that the, the pixels line up together that way um, you're not left with like a really wonky looking model where it's like well it looks good from the front but then it looks like really weird on the side because uh, the person didn't line it up correctly I hope that makes sense I hope that answers your question uh, Agent Ash asks how do you work with death animations that have no rotations a lot of guessing I assume uh, that's correct um, with a lot of the stuff I did with the pinky that you guys have seen uh, on my Twitter, uh, it's a lot of guesswork. It's, again, lining up those little blue pixel uh, joints uh, with with uh, where the joints would be on the pinky and then kind of spreading them out on the side to where it looks right. Um, it's a lot of trial and error and a lot of guesswork. Uh, one other... A tactic that I've kind of touched on a little bit is to create kind of a base frame model for the for the uh, for the character, and then uh, use that to kind of uh, rotate it to where you want uh, the position to look like. So you can rotate each limb if you make each limb like a separate uh, voxel model. Uh, there's a a feature in, in Magic of Voxel that's newly implemented where you can actually rotate the voxels uh, arbitrary degrees, which is great. 
it's a little weird because um, you're going to get a lot of uh, artifacts. Uh, it, it just kind of looks gross at first, so you have to do a lot of cleanup. And I've just found it easier to, to, to kind of just guess it and then adjust it later. Um, I can kind of show you guys how I do a death frame maybe later on. So I hope that answers your question. So back to uh, kind of chipping away at this. We're going to keep molding him. So he's less of a Minecraft character and more of a organic looking character. You also want to round things out um, on the sides as well. So this is the most time consuming aspect of voxel models. And you're probably wondering, well, what about the texture? Why is it this red color? Well, we're going to work on that in a little bit. Kind of want to get these pesty... Uh, other sprites out of the way, so we're just going to turn off background, display background objects, turn that off. That way you can give the model your undivided attention. It can be mind-numbing, it can be cathartic. Just depends on your mood. Any other questions in chat? No? Okay. If you take away too much of the model, you can always add it back. Uh, if you're in erase mode, just hold shift and then you can actually unerase things. It's not really unerasing, it's more of just adding <coughs> adding back. just kind of rotate your model around see where it looks kind of square and, and chunky and just chip away at it as crazy as it sounds sometimes if I'm at work I kind of want to go home and do this it's just kind of a nice way to wind down the day so let's take a look let's add back our background objects make sure everything still lines up so far so good also make sure that if you were doing a lot of chipping away that you did not uh, remove so much that there's uh, 
pixels behind it that you know should be uh, added to your model. Does that make sense? If there's pixels from the source model, from the source sprite that are shown here, you need to cover those up with with a, a 3D shape here. Let me show you what I mean. Say these were showing. Well, we don't want that because it's not accurate. So we want to add these onto the model so that it's as close as possible to the sprite. I say we'll call that leg done for now. And uh, we'll move on to the next leg. Again, double click the yellow skeleton turn off background and we're going to select this leg control X get out of world mode control V or get I'm sorry I said get out of world mode get into world mode control V so it adds a new model and then either double click on that model or just hit the down arrow and it'll bring you into that new separate model that you've made of his leg Turn on the background again so you can see what you're looking at. You're going to go into dilate mode. Not that one. Well, you're just going to click dilate, I mean. And one more time. That's too much. You can always just copy parts of the model and then bring them over to cover spaces if you don't want to hit dilate again because sometimes hitting dilate too too many times can really make it hard to, to uh, differentiate shapes when you end up just working with a blob and it's just gonna make everything much harder then we start clean up again Sometimes I think of this as, you know, like cutting a shape into dough and then getting rid of the excess dough around the shape. Okay. Turn off background again. So now we have our rough shape of our other leg and we can start smoothing it out. The first step in smoothing out, uh, which is makes things a lot easier to think about, is just start beveling the corners. Just start chipping away at the corners. You can do one at a time and then you'll start to see everything round out little by little. And if these yellow pixels are distracting, you can just go up to your edit panel, hit reverse, and then hit reverse again. And now everything is the same color. Sometimes having the multiple colors when I'm chipping away at this uh, is really distracting. And we'll just bevel this side. Bevel the back of them.
Okay. Uh, let's look at it. Look at it from every angle just to see if there's anything that looks a little too blocky to you. And once you've done that, again, turn on background. See if there are any pixels on the uh, sprite source that are not being covered by the model. Looks like I deleted a, too, a little bit too much right here. So we're going to want to add these pixels back in. So the first thing you want to want, going to want to do is is fit model size. Ch uh, choose a different color, and we're going to add a voxel where these parts are. But see that they're over here. We're going to want to select them, turn off background, and we're going to line them up with where they should be on the model. Now if you want to select a uh, just a certain pixel, you don't want to select anything else, click on where it says box select and that way you can just select a single voxel and it won't select anything behind it. So these are very useful commands that uh, did not exist in previous versions. Uh, well, it existed, but it wasn't uh, the rectangular select, which selects all this stuff behind it. There was only box select in previous versions, which was kind of frustrating. So, yeah, it really improves quality and makes it a lot easier to make better models uh, with the marquee tool and the box select tool. Now that we've got these voxels covered. Turn that off again. You can hit reverse, reverse again to make all the colors the same. And now we've got our two legs. Let's do this again. Okay. Now we've got our two legs. If they still look a bit too chunky to you um, when you're working you can always go in and chip away at him again. Let's check chat. Uh, Dividum, Dividuum says, not sure if asked before, I think in one of your tweets you mentioned that front side sprites don't necessarily match in height. I guess you then slightly scale one to match, blurring the sprite a bit. Uh, yeah, so previously, uh, earlier in the video, I was showing how to uh, scale a smaller sprite to the size of the front angle sprite, because I use the front angle as, you know, the reference angle. Everybody's familiar with, with what the front angle looks like, so that's why I want um, everything else to adhere to that angle. Um, so uh, you would do that, you would make the sprites the same height, and if there's any body parts that aren't lining up, uh, you can line those up as well. So, so I would select an arm, line it up with the front angle arm, uh, just so that you know there's as, less, there's as little discrepancy as possible uh, from the angles. So let's get back to it. Let's do a fun one. Let's work on his head. So we'll select his head with the marquee tool. Paste it. Go in here. It's just hit the little stick representing his head. We'll select it. Actually, you don't have to select it. You can leave it unselected, but just hit dilate. And this is going to be a lot of cleanup, but this angle, I mean, working on this head is a lot of fun. Then we're going to cut all this off. If anybody's following along uh, with Magic of Voxel, let me know if uh, there's anything that you missed and you want me to go over again.
make sure you also check his shoulders. And delete all that. Oh, and delete that too. And you're going to want to delete what's around his shoulders on the front view as well. Another thing about uh, Doom sprites is that the resolution is so low that a lot of there's a lot of guesswork involved sometimes with you know well what is this shape what is this supposed to be so it's kind of trial and error you kind of left up to your own devices to figure out you know where his helmet ends and his neck begins and just hope that everything looks accurate enough Let's change the color. I'm kind of tired of this burning, bright, hot red color. Let's change to a nice, maybe a nice blue. No, we've already done blue. How about we just do his helmet color? There we go. Now it's a lot easier to look at. So let's keep rounding them out. You can always look at the top view as well and just round out these squares Let's round this out. And if you're worried that things aren't going to look great when we project the uh, texture onto the model, don't worry. We can still edit it after the initial texture is projected onto it. That way you can kind of check for errors on your work. Make sure everything's supposed to be where it is. Everything's where it's supposed to be, rather. So let's take a look. We'll call that good for now. Next, we'll do his arms. And if these other models that we've done are in the way, you can just hide them. Go to your edit panel, click hide, and then hit hide. That way they're there, but you don't have to see them. If they're obscuring other parts of the model you need to work on. There's his arm, control X, world mode, control V, go back in, model mode. You know his gun is getting in the way too, let's hide that as well. It's, yeah, I didn't mean to select that. I didn't mean to select that. Okay, let me check chat. 
Nothing, nothing new. Okay. Again, we're going to dilate. Let's change the color to something we can see. And let's dilate it one more time. And we will copy and paste whatever else is missing here. There. So, big blocky arm. Let's go clean it up. Select everything outside the arm. Remember that the shoulder is part of the arm. We don't want to delete this area just outside of it over here. Select any other parts over here that are probably not part of the arm. Let me get rid of that one. What else is behind here? No, that's good. And let's just get rid of these for good measure because they're being hidden by the gun. Um, so they're most likely not his arm because that would be too thick. Let's check here as well. There's too much coming through. Always try and remember which arm you're working on. We're working on the one behind this one. So. And because we're working on this right arm and there's no sprite that I know of that shows his right angle. Uh, we're gonna have to do a lot of guesswork here, unfortunately. Let's see something real quick. Okay. So we're just gonna select some more pieces of the voxel that are probably not his arm. Catacomb GL Dev. Hi Catacomb GL Dev, thank you for joining us. Another thing you can do for some fast cleanup is to kind of view the model diagonally and then just take big strips of it off with uh, the line tool in erase mode. That really helps to mold it quickly and just make sure you're looking at it from all different angles. Make sure it looks right from every angle that you're working on. See right here is way too chunky. But since there's no sprite to reference that side, we have to just guess.
Let's have a look. Oh, wow. Okay, so I've deleted a lot more than I should have. There's this whole section that's missing. There's these parts of his shoulder that are missing. Uh, so let's add those back. Again, go into Model View, turn on the background, use a different color, and just put little voxels where there were voxels missing. Then we're going to use the Marquee Tool, highlight those new voxels, turn off background, and move them up here. So I smoothed it out a bit too much to where those voxels were missing. And you're going to want to... And remember, uh, I switched from marquee to box select when I'm moving these moving these around just kind of blend them together Change them all to the same color again, so I can see what I'm doing better. Run that one out again. So you always run the risk of taking off more than you you meant to, but you can always add it back. That's kind of the beauty of doing all the modeling before we uh, put the texture on it. Okay, so, oh, his uh, little bicep here is missing. Let's put that in there. Highlight some of the model with the marquee. Copy, paste, move it over. There. And we could smooth that out a little bit where we added that. So now he's got his little bicep there poking out. Okay. Uh, next one. His other arm. Guys, let me know if you're having trouble, need me to repeat something. Okay, 
Turn off background. Make sure all this is lined up correctly. I'm gonna hide the other arm just so I can see this better. Yeah. Oh, that's way too thick. Let's get rid of that. I don't even think I checked this angle. There we go. Now we've got his little, his little hand. So we're going to want to carve out the thumb. Turn that off. Oopsies. Take a look at that now. Oh. That's no bueno. There we go. I will clean this up where I deleted some voxels. really want it to look like a hand, not a blob. Okay, so that's one more down. So we just need his uh, gun and his torso completed. Since this is the last part of the original source skeleton, we don't have to del delete anything. We're just going to use this model and uh, 
One thing I've known uh, noticed about making the torso is um, you're going to want to take the center stick you made, copy it, paste it on both sides because obviously the torso is going to be a lot thicker than his other appendages. So you're just going to want it to be uh, thicker when you round it out. Otherwise, you're going to have like this tiny skeleton uh, torso and then big shoulders and then big hips. So you don't want that. You want everything to kind of spread out normally like that. See, now you've got more of a torso shape. Okay. So let's go ahead and get rid of anything that's on the shoulders. We've already done his shoulders with the arm models, so we don't need those there. We don't need anything uh, in the pants region because we did his we did his legs. He's a bit skinny here, so we're gonna want to thick him, thicken him up a little bit. And he's pretty chonks now, so we'll have to chip away at him. All right. Let's give him a nice soothing color while we're going to work on it. Let's start chipping away at this big torso. Background off. If you're having a hard time seeing um, the shading where the, you know, differentiating the shapes, you can always turn on uh, display shadow. That helps a little bit. You can also turn on the grid. That helps a lot. And turn on edge. This helps you see what you're doing a little bit better if you're having trouble. Now you can really see the shape of it.
Just round out every corner. I'd like to thank everybody for being here uh, for my first Twitch video. Thanks guys for coming and checking it out. So I don't know how this looks yet. Let's uh, let's turn off edge. Let's turn off grid. Let's highlight everything with Control A and click Show. Okay. So now we can kind of have a reference of how everything kind of looks together. Well, he's got a lot of uh, he's got a lot of problems. <laughs> he's got no neck. So let's highlight them, turn on background. Oh, see, I was smoothing them out and I hadn't even gotten rid of all this excess yet. Let's make sure we get rid of all this crap. Okay, and on this side as well. Looks good. What's great about having the uh, background uh, models on is that now you can kind of smooth it out and see where they intersect each other I'm gonna add one there we're gonna merge all these together eventually um, and do a little bit more smoothing but for now I just want to get each individual body part uh, coherent I'm just going to turn off the reference images for now because they're kind of just getting in the way. Uh, another thing that I've seen, I'm going to turn on the edge. I'm going to show you guys. Look at all this empty space right here. That's not good. We need to clean that up. Since his body is, since he's in this walking uh, position, his torso would be a bit twisted. So we're going to want to clean this up a little bit. I'm just erasing right here and right here. We want to clean that up. Uh, let's see. Oh, look, this this leg is a bit too chunk right here. We'll have to clean that up. Mm. 
And people get mad when he doesn't have a booty, so we'll make sure that he's got his booty. Oh, see, there's some of his booties missing. We gotta add it. And some of his torso is now <laughs> too, too thin. Uh, it looks good, though. What we're going to do now, because I need to add these missing butt voxels, is we're going to merge his legs and his torso together so we have more to work with, more room to work with. Then we're going to do that little trick I showed you for adding in missing voxels. Just put voxels where the where they should be. Then turn off the background. Select these ones and bring them to where they need to be. Then we're going to use these reference voxels here to fill in his butt. See if anybody has any questions. Nope, nothing yet. Okay. Let's turn on background. Oh, he's missing the. Uh, he's missing some voxels here as well. Add this. I don't see how I missed those, but I did. And don't forget to add voxels where they should be behind the parts that you added. Don't forget these ones in the front that we had to add as well. We'll put those right there. Well, probably right there. No, probably right there. Because I think it's just for his leg. There's a lot of guesswork involved um, with these tiny sprites. You kind of just got to work with them and basically just see what looks good. If it looks good, then, I mean, hopefully it's also accurate. Just do your best. Let's take a look at him now. Got a couple missing uh, right here. these all the way because I forgot to cinch up his bounding box so we got to pull these all the way over here now fit size model and we're gonna make his little elbow right here okay let's see There's some gray stuff right here, but I'm not sure what that is. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Maybe part of his abdomen. It's 
Let's open this up. Let's make this all the same color. Just give it another go around. Always, uh, always check your model again after you've uh, merged parts together, just to make sure that everything looks right. I feel like that needs to be. right there that needs to be rounded off who's here belt of some sort nice work by the way always excited to see what shows up next on Twitter oh well thank you Ogspaz I appreciate the comment thank you for the follow Just gonna check on the chat for a little bit. Does anybody have any questions or need me to go uh, through anything? If not, we'll just continue. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it could be a belt. Uh good point I think he has a belt let's let's look at the sprite so if we go to his yeah if you look at his uh, one of his death frames let me show you guys what I'm talking about he's got this right here which looks like a belt I'm pretty sure it's a belt and there's also a belt on uh, his back his back sprites so yeah it's it's a belt so we will work on that oh I see okay I didn't see it before because it's very close to the background color, but because I turned on edge, the edge feature, I was able to see it. So, let's add those pixels there, voxels I mean. Bring them over here. And we are going to just give him a belt. Bring it all the way around. Oh, not there though, because that's that doesn't exist. We're not going to bring the belt all the way around because those pixels are not on the sprite. Okay. So, last part to do is the gun. Let's hide everything else. And see how the gun goes lower than the uh, limit here of the bounding box? Well, if you make the sprite any bigger, it expands the bounding box, but 
it still didn't expand anything below what was already there. So you have to go into world mode, move the whole model down, and then go back into it. Bring that up, and now you have a little bit of space to work with here where the gun ends. So what we're going to do, change the color, something I can see, let's just make it purple again, uh, dilate it, okay. Now this rule is uh, this rule that I've made about cutting pixels on the front and sides only works in so many scenarios. Like in this one, the uh, the gun on the side of sprite is so far off from the position of it on the front of the sprite that th we just can't work with it that way. So what you kind of got to do is just work with the front sprite and then uh, make it 3D and just try to make it look as good as possible. It's not going to look exactly like this, the side sprite. Um, but you just got to work with it and make it look as good as you can. So we're just going to cut where I think it ends. If you're wondering what I'm doing right now, I'm highlighting parts of the purple gun object behind the sprite. You can't see it, but I'm highlighting them. See? They're being highlighted. I'm just using the model to trace where those are. No, there's one there. Okay. Now we want the spaces in here as well. Done. Now this looks pretty funky, so what we're going to do is we're going to make it one flat um, one flat looking model so we're not going to deal with all this depth yet first we gotta spread all the parts out so that when we cut it it's just one continuous well one flat shape I know it looks weird right now what I'm doing but bear with me there it's like a cookie cutter I just wanted to cut the shape of the gun out and see it's not it's not lined up with the the side sprite but we're gonna we're gonna fix it eventually let's look at everything so far that we've got okay so we've got our shape of the doom guy pretty much So now that we have him, let's save your work, and we're just going to select the body parts, but not the gun. Okay, turn off background, we're going to take a look at him. Let's make them all one uniform color. Take a moment to look at him and make sure there's no weird shapes or pointy square edges so we don't want any of that
Okay. You guys ready for the fun part? Now we get to project the front view texture onto him. This is a little tricky. So what we're going to do first, select, well, okay, I, <laughs> I'm way ahead of myself here. Select the sprite, select the model, copy and paste it and move it over. Sorry, I need to get used to talking about what I'm doing when I'm when I'm making these videos. Okay, make sure both are highlighted. Then go here to Boolean and click Union. Okay. Now go inside the model. Click Select Tool. Make sure it's on Marquee. Highlight the sprite. Click Transform. Make sure it's on Scale and see these arrows here you're going to use this arrow to stretch him all um, through the 3d model you made and select go back to select marquee and you're probably thinking well what okay now what now my model's gone no it's not gone first click a color that does not appear in this model so we're going to use blue then hit inverse on the uh, edit panel here under select hit inverse now you can see that the model is still there he selected because we inversed our selection now hit reverse well now what happened well we reversed the shape so that where the shape was is now hollow and that hollow shape is now engulfing the original sprite. Now you're going to deselect that. Click on the trash can, region remove, and select the blue. Boom. I know it's funky right now, but I wanted to show you guys what it looks like now. Um, so this is kind of like the first uh, fun step that you do. Now, take some time to look at him. Uh, and this also gives you an opportunity to delete pixels that don't make sense. So, clean them up a little bit. And make sure you look at him from every angle, just in case you see anything funky. Yeah, look at him from, uh, you know, 45 de degree angle, and you know, does that look does that look right? If not, work on it. Looks a little better now. Okay. Now you guys are probably thinking, hey, what, what about the, uh, the gun running through his chest? How are we going to fix that? Well, uh, there's a few ways we can fix that. One thing you can do is by hand, um, if you want to go through that. Um, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't feel like it. Um, in which case, use a another frame from the sprites and try and uh, figure out what's behind the areas that are obscured by 
by the gun. So if we take a look at his death frame, you can kind of see his armor and that his uh, abs are exposed. So we're going to want to work on that. Now that we have the texture superimposed on him, let's use the marquee tool again and select each limb. We want to separate him all over again. Oops, look how I got some of his uh, torso there. Select those pieces. Control X. Go into the main model. Control V and they're back. Again with his other arm. Control X. Control V. For his head. Control X. Control V. Everything else can kind of stay because it's not blocking any other part of his body. So we're just going to work on cleaning up his torso on the front end. And then I'll show you guys how to do the back end. Got some ch uh, chats here. E1M1 uses play W0 and play N02. Can't quite figure out the first one though. The frame where he holds his throat makes the belt look like three ammo pouches. Pouches. Let's take a look. I think you're talking about this one. This frame right here. Yeah, it's just very hard to see what's going on here. <laughs> um, okay. I'm sorry. Oh, my watch is being funny. Uh, so it looks like obviously his gun is falling to the ground and there's like a fanny pack or something on his belt. And yeah, it's just very ambiguous what's going on there. I'm not too sure. And there's no telling on um, what parts of the sprite were the original model that they digitized and what parts were drawn in by the artists. So, um, yeah. I can kind of see like the three pouches here. So, we can try and see if that makes sense on the model as we work on it. Let's go into his torso. Let's turn off the shadows. Let's turn on constant so that you can see the pixels, the voxels with no shadows on them. The first thing we can do to kind of work on this is to make a basic all green area where we're not sure what's going on. So we're going to fill all this up with green and then we'll work on his abs and his belt afterward. So, there's that. You're also going to want to fix his arm. Just fill it in with uh, the basic color for now, and then we'll work on the shading later.
see that there. Okay. We got a lot of work to do. Again, I'm going to pull up uh, his death sprite so we can kind of take a look at it. Let's hide his arms and we're just going to look at his uh, torso while we're working on him. So one great thing is that uh, if you're in model mode but you want to look at a reference you can use um, the pixel voxel color tool to select a voxel from the source frame while you're working on it, the reference frame I mean. So I've selected kind of like a beige color for his um, abs. And then keep in mind that he's kind of in the light right here and in in this model he's going to be kind of in you know his torso is kind of in the dark so we're not going to use the same light colors that they used in his death frame Let's darken them right now, honestly. Where you can always save time. Um, I don't think I asked you. I told you guys this. You can save time when you're painting. If you have paint selected, uh, instead of having to use the pixel voxel color every time, just hold down Alt and select the color you want to use, and that'll save you a bunch of time. Let's bring the uh, arms back to see what this all looks like. Keep in mind the gun is also going to be obscuring a lot of this. 
I just want to see what it looks like all together. Uh, not bad. Okay, let's see. Okay, this arm's going to be tricky. Remember, if there's anything that just looks weird on your model, even though it might 100% adhere to what you know the sprite looks like on one angle, if it looks weird, get rid of it or fix it. Because, um, I mean, accuracy is one thing, but if it doesn't work in a 3D 
in a, in a 3D v uh, version, then, you know, don't use it. It's a new version. It's going to have a few changes. Now we're going to copy the machine gun and the player again. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to union them, go into model mode, marquee select the sprite, stretch it out to cover everything, select a blue color or any color that does not appear in this character, click inverse click reverse unselect everything and put the blue color in the trash now you've got the machine gun by itself If you're having trouble trying to uh, line up separate pieces, always make sure you have a reference. Like right here, I just uh, copied our model. Uh, I lined it up with the with the uh, the gun, and then I brought it over to our character that we were working on, and I deleted the uh, reference model. So now it's lined up as it should be. Okay. So we're going to do a, a hard part right now. Um, let's copy the base model that we made. Change the color of it. And we're going to go into our sp sprites and we're going to import the back frame, the rear frame of the player model. You're going to want to flip it on the X axis because now it's facing the correct position. We're going to need to resize it because uh, look how much smaller it is than uh, the front frame. Bring it over here. Now we're going to do a little piece by piece. And 
you're going to try and fit it on right here. Now you see there's some pixels that don't uh, perfectly match up there. So we're going to want to add some new pixels where those are. Check to make on the other side to make sure there's none showing through on the other side. What we're doing here is lining up um, the back end the exact same proportions as the front end. Because, like I said before, um, ID tried to do this fake perspective thing with their 2D sprites to kind of feign 3D. It looked pretty good for the most part. But we want everything to be the correct sizes for every side that we make. Which I should, probably shouldn't be doing this now. I should be doing it after I try to adjust the size of it. Let's separate the legs because I can't really see the, where one ends and one begins. And hide it.
other leg. Another feature is rotate. Just go to transform, click the little circle, and then you can kind of, it'll help you to line things up. Remember to go on the other side, clean that up. show everything. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Let's get rid of these intersecting pixels. We'll fix what's uh, obscured later. The back of the arms, uh, we're just going to paint by hand because you're, you're going to end up uh, having to do it anyway because there's going to be a lot of adjustments to make once we project this onto the model. I'll show you what I mean. Well, let's clean this up real quick. Okay. Kind of see what I did there. Well, we want to get rid of this uh, arm here. We're not going to use the arms on the back side. We're going to paint those by hand. Because otherwise it's just going to look really wonky and we'll have to fix it anyway. Now that you have the back of the model, you're probably wondering, well, how are we going to get that onto the other front model texture? So the trick I've learned is to, first of all, upsize your uh, working area. So 256 by 256 by 256, and then you're going to select the Transform Move tool. I'm going to highlight the entire model with Control A. Control C to copy it and Control V to paste it within itself. Then you're going to hit reverse twice and then you're going to move this reversed model a little bit so that it's kind of halfway out of the model. 
Now unselect everything and use the trash can to get rid of the blue. Now you see I've kind of made this hollow shell of the the back, the back end. Now you're going to go into the other model you're working in and paste it in. But before we do that, <laughs> sorry, um, we have to put this model back together because it's in pieces, I forgot. Now, copy it. Line it up. So we're going to have to do a lot of uh, fixing here. Let me check chat. Nothing new. Okay. Another good reason we don't want it we did not want to use the uh, arms from the back side is I already hand painted one side. We just need to fix it up a little bit, but um, it's basically there. Just needs a little bit of shading done. Kind of like that. We can fix this arm as well. Now we can get rid of some of this extra stuff.
Okay. Now we're also going to want to clean up the sides of the model because we just have the front and back. So we're going to need more than that. So go ahead and pull up the side view of the model. Like we did again. I guess I shouldn't have deleted it since I'm going to use it again. But that's okay. We'll just do it again. Oops, I made him too big. There you go. If you see any weird shading on the original sprite that you don't like, um, I say fix it, you know, if, if you can make it look better than it did originally, why not? Okay, let's start by separating the helmet. going to copy these and move them up because we need space. That's my dog. Line that up. Hang on a second. Sorry about that. Let's get back to it. Um, so, again, we're going to do kind of that same technique I showed earlier with uh, projecting. But since we're only doing the side, we don't want to get too much of the image on here because we've already got the front and the back we don't want it to spread out and overlap any of that so what you're going to do first is you're going to thicken or you're going to scale out the model on the x-axis so it looks like this and the reason you're going to do that is because we're going to use the erode, erode uh, function, which kind of eats away at the model. And the reason we use that is because we don't want too much of the outside edges of the model to overlap on our current model or on our working model. So once you've done that, go ahead uh, expand it by the x-axis one more time and then select both models hit union and then bring this model over through this model the helmet then click a blue color or any color that's not present in the model and then hit inverse 
and then reverse unselect everything get rid of the uh, blue color you're probably wondering well, why the heck did you do that well I'll show you why first let's clean it up let's get rid of any gl uh, glass on there okay now copy the model and select the helmet paste the model and you're going to move it up into the helmet now if there's too much of that in there we can we can fix it we can control Z to undo that exit out get out of the working model back into world space control V and then hit the down arrow to get back into model space and we're going to need to trim more of this out because it's uh, it's overlapping too much of what we've already done the work we've already done in the model and we don't want that now let's try it I trimmed a little bit more off of it okay so now we just need to blend this in a little bit So any pieces you see that look weird, just blend it, blend it from the palette. So we just, the end goal is to make it look good. Okay, so you just kind of want to blend every one of the uh, the sprites we merged into this thing together. It's kind of like a Frankenstein. You're just kind of stitching everything together. Um, and they're all using that base model that you made. Just go around, make sure it just make sure it looks good. Use plenty of colors to smooth it out. Just anything that stands out to you that doesn't look quite right, just fix it. I think if there's too many colors, too much of the same color in one row, I like to change it up just to make it look smoother.
Anyway. That's pretty much the helmet at this point. Let's move on now to uh, the left leg. So let's create a copy of this because we're just going to work with the leg. Oops. Line it up with your model. And then we're going to use the scale, spread it out again on the x axis, use a road. create a copy union highlight drag it over inverse reverse see how it looks if we paste it in here. <clears throat> That's a bit too much. Take it out, get rid of that one. Trim some of this off. Copy it back in, see how it looks. Still looks weird. Take it out, get rid of this uh, light color right here, copy it, put it back in. There's going to be a little bit of cleanup to do. First and foremost because this part of the texture bled onto this and I knew that was going to happen. I just wanted to deal with it later. So we're going to fix that. Obviously line this up better because you want you want things to continue correctly from one side of the model to the other. And a lot of things are going to be skewed because of the different proportions on different sides. So just smooth it out, take your time. You gotta have a lot of patience. Unless someone else comes around and has a better way to do it, then maybe you won't need as much patience, but in this way you do. Just want to make sure this is all cleaned up. I 
another thing is we don't want this side on this side. We want this to look like uh, you know we want it to have some shadow on it since it's where his legs meet. There's going to be a lot of darkness here. So you can do it by hand. Kind of see it coming together now. What do you guys think? I think I'm going to keep this little tan thing because it might be a button on his uh, <clears throat> cargo pants. see Captain Lindsay I'm surprised at how quickly this is coming together super swell job thank you Captain Lindsay I uh, really appreciate all the comments any feedback you guys have anything you think I could do better please let me know um, just wanted to start letting people know how I'm doing this He looks a bit thick right here. Let's fix that. something. Moise Siddique followed me. Thank you, Moise. 00H20, this side. Thank you for the info so far. Off to bed this side. Take care. Uh, take care. Have a good night.
Okay. The next thing we're going to do combine all this together. And we're going to export it to a slab 6 vox file which is down here slab 6 it's gonna seem like just another vox file until we right click and open it with slab 6 Let me make sure that this is showing correctly Slab 6 is another free to use um, application made by Ken Silverman, I believe. He was the, the person who created the build engine for games like Duke Nukem, Shadow Warrior, and Blood. And Slab 6 actually has a lot of cool features that Magic of Voxel doesn't, surprisingly. Uh, it's a little bit weirder, weirder to use because it is so old, um, but it has a brightness feature. You can just automatically brighten the pixels that you're working with. So instead of having to go to the palette and select colors you want, um, you can just use this feature. Granted, it only works um, if there's enough colors in the palette. If if you go too bright or too dark, it'll just switch to the next color in the in the order of colors on the uh, 256 color palette. So you gotta keep that in mind. But it really gives you an easier way to um, smooth out the shading. And it's going to help us help us out a lot on this one because we're missing a side for reference um, this side right here, we need to fix this. It also has a blur option, which is amazing. <laughs> I love blur on slab, slab six. This is way ahead of its time. But it really allows you to kind of like fix the seams of your model. Very quickly, I might add. And then you can use the brightness to smooth it out even more. because blurring only can help so much and then you have to actually put in some put some thought into it let's fix this a bit this looks weird Some of these under angles you can start fixing as well.
I just love seeing these sprites come to life in, in 3D after decades of seeing them relegated to 2D. Oops. Okay, hold on. Let's, uh... My cats are crawling everywhere. So I think for the most part we've got him done. He's not perfect. Uh, you know what? In fact, I, I do want to fix one thing. Go ahead, save the model back as a Vox file. Close Slab 6. Reopen it in Magicka Voxel. And we're just going to highlight, we just want to highlight the gun. I know I got some of his arm in there, so we're going to get his hand out of here as much as we can. Okay, turn on background. One thing I noticed was that the uh, machine gun was not completely in his hand like it should have been, so I'm just going to put it at a bit of an angle. Union it back together into one voxel. 
we're just going to make it look like it's at a, a bit of an angle. You guys kind of see what I did there? I made it. I made the machine gun a separate model again, and then I kind of cut it into four pieces and had them staggered on each other so that they create kind of this illusion of uh, being at an angle. And then I put it all back together. So. Another thing is that his arm is, his hand is kind of going through the gun, and we want it to go under the gun. So let's fix that. Okay, see what I did there? Export it back to a slab 6 file so that we can give it the final go around. Any more funky stuff you see, just fix it. God, Slab 6 makes things easier. When I first found out all the things that this really old application could do, I was blown away. I was so happy. Check chat real quick. Did do you check the model against the diagonal facing sprites? Uh, no, I don't um, because I kind of just kind of uh, <clears throat> look at them, but I don't do like a actual side by side comparison. <clears throat> I just kind of look at the model itself at a diagonal angle to see if it looks right. If it doesn't, I work on it some more. I chip away at the uh, the corners more. Um, but trying to line it up with the diagonal sprite just causes a whole nother can of worms where uh, you know there's going to be angle discrepancies with, with the 45 degree, degree angle that you know you didn't have that issue with the front frame or the side frame but uh it doesn't hurt to compare it um side by side just to make sure that it's as accurate as possible um i just kind of go by what looks right to me um so yeah if uh it's it'd probably be a good idea to to do that it'd probably be a good habit to have You're welcome.
So now that we're basically done, um, the last step is to give it a test run in the game. Um, the first thing you have to do is uh, hit the tilde key when you're in slab six, and it'll bring up this uh, these windows down here, which are the axis of the model. And the way the Doom engine works is um, the characters and actors are all or oriented, if that's a word, on the very bottom of the sprite. Otherwise, if you try to play it in game, the, the, the model will be in the ground. Go back to the sprites and see what it's called. So playa one, playa one, play a one. But we don't want to include the one because that'll cause problems in the GZ, GZ Doom engine. So just name it play a, get rid of the one. Now that we have it, we're able to put it into GZ Doom. I have my uh, zip file in my GZ Doom folder this will be available pretty soon. Um, so open up a zip file. You should have all your voxels under a folder inside the zip file called voxels. Open that up and place your play a voxel inside. Then close it up and then go into voxel def.txt still in your zip file. These are all my uh, list of voxels I have. Let's go all the way down to the bottom and we're just going to name it we're just going to type in play a equals play a two brackets now normally that's what you would do uh, but since we want to see the model and since we're the player we can't see ourselves I mean there's probably a way to do it in GZ Doom I don't know. I haven't messed with it. But instead of that, we're going to name the model. Uh, we're going to do this instead. Let's get rid of the play A equals quotes play A. And we're just going to get rid of the head A uh, voxel and we're going to replace head A voxel with play A. So we're just going to rename play A to head A. This is kind of a janky way to do it, but I just want to see what it looks like in game right now. So let's go ahead, put the Chilo voxel zip or whatever you name your zip. <laughs> That's uh, that's basically how it is. How it, how I do it. Um, anyway, does anybody have any questions? If not, I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, end the stream. Um, I'm going to try and upload this to YouTube tonight. I um, just want to thank everyone who came in and hung out. And Oops. That. Everybody who came in and hung out and uh, had questions and 
just wanted to see how it all worked. Um, thank you everyone for uh, subscribing or following. And uh, if there's nothing else, uh, I'll see everyone later. Thank you. Bye-bye.